Hello and welcome to the Django class-based views series. So here we focus on, well, class-based views in Django. We're slowly building towards building our own class-based views, but at the moment we're just moving through the generic views that are available in Django. So by all means, have a look at the other tutorials in this series and move towards this tutorial. We're now looking and focusing on, in this tutorial, on the update view. So previously, in the previous tutorial, we looked at the create view. And what we're going to find is that these two views are very similar. So as per normal, we have a look at the update view behind the scenes, and then we have a look at the methods and attributes that it inherits and so on. And then I'll give you a, a simple example of the detail view. So let's just get straight into this. You can see here that the create view and the update view, they all inherit uh, the same classes and mix-ins. So the question here is, well, what is the difference between the create view and the update generic view? So it's probably no massive surprise if you consider the fact that what these views are trying to achieve. So the create view really is just a, a view that adds new objects or data to a database table. That's pretty much what the role is. Whereas the update view, if you think about the process that needs to happen, that needs an additional task or additional step. Because to update something, we need to know what object or what piece of data or what table or what field we need to update. So the main difference is the fact that that's the case. We just need to be able to define the data that we want to update before then updating it. So far in the series, we have been talking about um, behind the scenes and um, inheritance and mix-ins, um, different pieces of code that we can add or the different attributes that we can utilize. Well, here also, if you want to have a look at the actual code, if you go into GitHub, you can actually go to the Django package and you can actually see the code and have a look through to see what it's actually doing. So here you can look at all the different mix-ins and inherited um, views, uh, sorry, classes. And uh, if we move down, for example, here, we can eventually, if I do a find, we can have a look at the actual base update view. And this is basically the code that's running. So we can see here, we've got the class here, and then this class update view inherits the base update view, um, which is this uh, class here. And this is all the instructions or the code that's obviously working behind the scenes. So if we were to compare, if we were to compare the um, base update view with the base create view, that's the previous tutorial, the create view, you can see that the only difference is the fact that you've got this additional line here. So the create view doesn't actually um, load anything into the object. So here's self.object none. Whereas the update view essentially then tries to uh, collect the item from the database. Essentially what's happening here is so self.object equals self.getObject. So that is literally the main difference between the create view and the update view. And like I said, without repeating myself, that's simply because we need to consider what the difference is between the create and update. The fact that the update will need to actually select or find a way of actually knowing what data we actually want to overwrite or change. So let's have a look to see what that looks like in the code. So here I've got the previous tutorial code. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, you can download this in the a description. I will leave a, leave a link too to help you uh, get started if you're not familiar with Django and you just want to get this started. Um, by all means check out the other tutorials in the other series on how to get started in terms of loading up Django etc. But there'll be a video on how to download the GitHub repositories and get it started. So here we can see that we were working in the CBV in the first couple of tutorials in the series and then we moved over to the books. So we created a very simple book application whereby we added books to a database and then we're just outputting all the books and then the individual book. If you go into the views, you can see that we're, we've been utilizing all these different views here from the generics in Django. And the last one we utilized was create view. So let's have a look now at utilizing the update view. 
So let's just go ahead and start the server, which I think it's already on. So let's go back and we've got, we have a welcome here to books. So you can see here that we can now click on a book and it takes you to the individual book item. So what we want to be able to do now is edit it. So let's make a new link here where we can just type in edit here and that will take us to a new link where we can then edit the item. So that's the first thing that we need to do. Let's create a new URL. So for this one, all we need to do here is we'll just take the slug. Now, remember that we're getting the individual post or books from the slug name, and that's being obviously queried on the database and selecting the right uh, book based upon the slug, based upon the, um, the title of the book. So you can change this obviously to ID if you wanted to, but we're just gonna keep it with slug for now. Um, check out the previous tutorial on what I mean by that if you're not too sure. So slash, and then we're just gonna type in edit. So we're gonna change this to book edit view. And then this is just gonna be the book edit detail. So now we've got that in, let's just make sure we need to, we're gonna to need to import that in from the view. So let's put it up there and import it from the view. And that's pretty much all we need here. So now we can go ahead and just go to the view. Just make sure we save that and close that. So I'll just install that. So let's go ahead now and we're gonna need from the edit, the update view. So let's import that in from Django. So that's now available and let's make a new class now. So what we can do in actual fact here is just copy this um, create view here and just paste it here and then just change this to edit. And then we're gonna be utilizing the, um, uh, we're gonna be utilizing the update view. So let's just make sure that we put that here. Okay, so you can see then in the update view, we define the model that we want to utilize. Here we've created a form that was done in the previous tutorial. So let me just show you that. So this was a simple form where we extending or we're utilizing the model form. So we created a class meta to find the model we wanted to use. That was the database right here. And then all the fields that we wanted to use or update. So you can see I've created some widgets. This is just a bootstrap class that I've added just to add some sort of styling. So that was the form. You can see that at the top here, we've imported the form in here from forms, import add form, it was called add form. So that's a form there. And then we had the template name. So we're gonna use the same template name as the previous tutorial, because it's, it does the same thing. It's just gonna be a form which we can submit. But obviously this time we want it to submit to our add edit view. Okay, and then we have this success uh, URL. So we've got that. So that's just a, a URL redirect. Once we've added a new item to the books or edited an item in the books table, that's just going to redirect us to the books URL. Okay, so you can see it's pretty much exactly the same as the add book view, but um, it's gonna perform that additional action don't remember. So what's going to, what you're going to see if, if we now go in and edit this book. So let's refresh this page. Make sure you've got the server on, obviously, which I don't think I might not have the server on. No. Okay. So let's just turn this, the server on. So it looks like we've got a problem here. Cannot import name book edit view from books views. So I've done something wrong here. I've called this add, oh, I should be edit. Did I call it edit book edit view? So uh, this needs to be called book. There we go. So now we've done that, let's go back into the web page. So we can now refresh and you can see that it instantly picks up all the information in the form. So let's just go back to the books and choose another book. You can see that if I choose any of these books and then 
I have to manually obviously, manually obviously type in edit here. You could add a link if you wanted to, but it fills the form up with the existing data that's in the database. So what I need to do now, obviously, is just edit something. So I'll just type in new, new book, and then press submit. And that takes us back to the redirect that we created. And you can see here, it says new book, blah. So you can see that we've made the change. So hopefully you would agree that utilizing the update view makes it incredibly easy to code out a form to update data in a database. Of course, you'd need to create your links to that page, the edit page in your system and so on. But the, the basic back end of it is very simple, utilizing the update view. So I just wanted to kind of drill down a little bit and give you an explanation of, well, what is actually going on here? Maybe some additional information. So let's just remember that the update view is utilizing self object equals self get object. Whereas here on the uh, create view in the previous tutorial, it wasn't. Now, because they all inheriting the same items, it doesn't mean that you couldn't uh, change the create view to perform the same operation. But as per normal, Django gives us this generic view so that we don't have to write additional code. So essentially using the update view to update data just means we have to write less code than if we were to use the create view. Most of this generic views just boils down to the fact that we're just writing less code essentially, or we're not rewriting code that's already exists in Django. So let's have a look now at the single object mixin. So they both have the single object mixin inherited. So let's just go into the documentation and have a look at this. So here we are in the single object mixin. So if we move down, we can see that these are all the methods and attributes that we can access or utilize because we're importing into the update view this single object mixin. So we also have now available these methods and attributes. So let's have a look down here. We've got the slug field and eventually you'll get to the get object. And here it kind of does give you a fairly good description or an overview of what this is doing. So it returns the single object that this view will display. Now, obviously here, we're not displaying essentially anything, but then you think, well, actually we are because in the form, don't you forget, we're actually returning the data into the form. So that's an important point to make out. So this is where the get object is going to um, be utilized to get the data and then to put it into the form so then we can edit the data. So you can see here it says it looks for the PK URL uh, quag, quag, kwag, quags, and then utilizes that to actually perform a primary key based lookup. So if you remember here, in actual fact, we don't use primary keys. So if you remember in our system, if we go back, we're utilizing in our URL the slug. We can change that to ID by all means. Um, that is possible. Again, have a look at the detail view to kind of explore that first and then come back to the, um, so not the detail view, um, have a look at the create view and then come back and have a look at this. I did roughly explain what ID or how we could add ID there. So going back here, you can, if you read further down, it says, then it also looks for the slug URL. So here essentially what's happening is that Django is reading the URL. So if I go back to the page, apologies for flicking around here. If I go back to the page, Django is using this URL here, or this slug here, to actually make a query on the database. It's returning the item from the database and then it's adding it to our form, the data to the form. Now, when we do it the other way, when we submit, Django is then stripping the slug again from the, um, the URL and it's then utilizing that to identify what data in the database to update. Thank you very much for listening. I think that wraps up the update view. It was very short and sweet, but I think we got to the main point very quickly and we looked at the differences between the update view and the create view, which is obviously very important. 
So 99% of the time, there isn't too much you're going to potentially expand upon in the, in the update view. You just want to update data in the database. Of course, like I said, you need to connect this all up in your project, but essentially it does what it does. Um, it does it very effectively. So hopefully you're enjoying this series so far. Be interested to get your feedback if you have any, and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.